everyone this is Leslie with the plaid poodle thanks for joining me today my card today is completely copied and as they say in the card making world paper crafting world cased from my good friend and stampin up uh, fellow demonstrator Donna Mack she sent me this beautiful card actually this is my sample because I changed a couple of things up but she sent me this beautiful card and I completely um, copied it um, so um, I it got a lot of likes and attention on my social media so I thought wow people are really liking this card so let me show you how uh, we made it I'm starting with a piece of five and a half by eight and a half inch cardstock and this is old olive it's one of Stampin' Up's uh, green colors in the brights collection and for a list of all the products I'm using in today's video if you're interested they are in the links below the YouTube video or on my blog uh, theplaidpoodle.com now the next thing I'm going to do is she's just used a little one fourth, well actually it's a half inch by five and a fourth inch um, designer series paper and this is from the neutrals designer series paper stack. The designer series paper stacks are wonderful. They coordinate with all of our inks and so you, if you purchased uh, um, Old Olive Ink, and you have the Brights Collection um, Designer Series Paper Stack, you know that your Old Olive Ink is going to coordinate perfectly with the um, cardstock. Okay, I've just adhered that to the front of the card. And now I'm going to take a piece of basic black, and this is three and three fourths by five and a fourth, and I'm going to put it on the card front. And the adhesive I'm using today is Fast Fuse. Doesn't take very much adhesive, and it stays forever. The applicator is a little tricky to get used to. But once you get used to it, it's awesome. And it holds yards and yards and yards of adhesive. That's what I like. I don't have to replace my adhesive all the time. Okay, for the um, stamping, we're going to stamp the outside of the card. And I'm going to do some stamping off. So I've got a grid sheet down here on my work surface. And the first stamp set we're using is Butterfly Basics. This is in the annual catalog. It's a set of two um, stamps and um, just real pretty flowers and butterflies and kind of a vintagey look. And it's got this really nice, um, what would you call this? <laughs> Honeycomb. Duh. Okay, so to stamp the honeycomb, I'm going to use basic black ink. Okay, like I said, I'm going to stamp off a little bit because I don't want um, my basic black to be so dark, especially when I stamp my uh, sentiment down here. I might stamp off a couple of times on that, but I'm going to stamp off once on my scrap, and then I'm just going to um, stamp once and then I'm going to stamp again and then again down here. So I've, I'm just creating a background to work on top of. We're going to come back to the basic black ink, but we're done with the honeycomb stamp. Now I'm going to stamp the foliage with the um, old olive e um, ink. And I'm going to do it one time full, oops, falling off my block. I've lost my block. <laughs> I'm going to do it one time full strength up top here. But then I'm going to do it again and then one more time down here, just very lightly. So I've got it three times on there. I think my glue is melting. I've got all these lights on to film and I think my 
my um, adhesive on there is melting. Okay, and now I'm going to do um, the sentiment, and I'm going to show you how to use the stamp -a jig Some people love this. I love it because I'm, I'm kind of a perfectionist, and I don't like to eyeball things. Some things I'm okay with eyeballing, but my sentiments, I like them to be straight up and um, perfect. So I'm going to use a little washi tape to hold that down. And what I've done is I've stamped the um, the Happy Birthday Sentiment will reenact. <laughs> we'll reenact here. I've inked up my stamp and I've lined up the um, acetate sheet or plastic sheet that comes with the stamp -a jig with the corner. And I've inked up my stamp. And then I'm lining the corners up, if you can see right there, the corner of my block, and stamping down on the plastic. Now it's right there, it's not going anywhere, and I'm gonna figure out where I want that on the front of my card base. So I'm gonna come up here, and I think it looks good right there. I'm gonna line up this corner again, and now I can remove the plastic acetate sheet because sometimes when you're using these red rubber stamps, and then I'm going to line the corner up with the stamp -a jig And I can remove that now, and it should be exactly where I placed it. And it was. Um, it just takes a second, and sometimes, you know, it just takes a little bit of practice, and, and um, but it just gets your um, stamp exactly where you want it, straight every time. And it's real quick and easy. Okay, now we have some little um, splatters, I guess what those are. <laughs> and um, I could take uh, an aqua painter and some ink and just kind of splat on my, my card, but why do that when I have a stamp, a splatter stamp, and I'm using the Timeless Textures. Um, they've got some really fun background stamps to add texture at, to your backgrounds. And so I'm just going to take that with um, the black and stamp off and just put this stamp here, there, and everywhere. Okay, I'm sorry I had to stop the camera. My memory card was full, but um, the only thing I have done since you uh, we left you at the last shot, I have um, I adhered the um, stamped cardstock to the card front. Uh, I centered it on the black piece of cardstock that we had on the card front, and then I made a little tussle, and I'll reenact that. Um, I didn't notice my camera had stopped. But what I've done is I've taken a length of, um, this is the gold thread. And Stampin' Up! carries this in the annual catalog. There's several colors, bronze, black, gold, silver. But we're just going to add a little, um, a little shine to the card. And it's called a tussle. S someone told me it's called a tussle. Uh, we're going to tussle this thread. Um, and I'm, how I'm doing it is I'm just wrapping it around my hand like this to create this little tussle. <laughs> it sounds like a Victorian name or something, you know, maybe, you know, did they carry little tussles in their pockets in the Victorian age? And then I, I'm just going to put a little piece of um, adhesive right there. We're going to cover that up with our dragonfly so it doesn't matter that it's there. And I'm going to try and make sure the ends at least, you know, get stuck onto that adhesive. I could have used a glue dot or any kind of adhesive. And when we put that um, dragonfly on there, um, that's going to help hold it down to the um, adhesive on the dragonfly. But I just want to make sure the ends aren't all loose and flying around. And then I'm just going to kind of spread it out. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's just kind of a, just a, a little mess. <laughs> 
but it's a little um, another layer and a little dimension and a little shine to the card okay now the fun part is to stamp the dragonfly and I'm using one of the new stamp sets out of the uh, occasions catalog that is live until the end of May it's called dragonfly dreams and you can get it in a bundle with the um, the framelits so you can cut out all these different pieces and this bumblebee is really cute and it's got some really nice font and sayings but we're going to use the the dragonfly today and I need a little scrap of whisper white cardstock to stamp my butterfly on or it's a dragonfly I'm sorry and I'm also going to use the basic black ink and this is a pretty good size stamp because of the wings so I'm going to ink up the stamp this way and I'm going to make sure I get my ink um, pretty pretty even over the whole wing and then this is a photopolymer stamp so for those I kind of like to add a little bit of more pressure if I'm not using a um, normally I would stamp it on uh, over a piercing mat with a little bit of foam and give but let's see how this does perfect love it when a plan comes together <laughs> Okay, and now we're going to cut that little butterfly out, or dragonfly, I'm sorry, it's not a butterfly, it is a dragonfly. So I'm going to have to get my big shot up here, try and get it so y'all can see, there we go, and these are the framelits, look at these, I love these little ones and there's a bigger one and a smaller one and then but we're going to use the outline today and the little bumblebee but we're just going to use the outline and I am going to I'm going to use a little piece of washi I do I don't have my magnetic plate in here my magnetic platform. If I had that there, I wouldn't have to worry about this, but I don't want it to shift when I'm going to sandwich it in there. And cut it out. It's so cute. And there it is. It's easy as that. Okay, then I'm going to take some Wink of Stella. This is the clear Wink of Stella, just to add some, a little bit of shine to our dragonfly's wings. So I'm just going to kind of color in the wings with this Wink of Stella. And I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up or not. We're going to let that dry and there's a, just a little bit of shimmer. It just adds the tiniest bit of shimmer. I'm going to even do his little body. Her little body, his little body, I don't know. <laughs> and while we're letting that dry, I'm going to scooch that aside, we'll um, stamp the inside of the card. And I've again I've used the um, Old Olive ink. And the foliage. Let's see if this little guy is going to stay on the block today. I'm just going to put it up top so we can leave room for a signature and a little message and then stamp it again right there a little lighter. And for my sentiment I'm going to um, use my stamp -a jig again and like I said I've already stamped it on there but I want to make sure that I get 
get it right where I want it. Kind of, I'm kind of particular that way, I guess. I don't know. I don't. It drives me nuts when something's not straight. And see, I'm getting a little anal here. I'm gonna <laughs> tape that so it doesn't slide out from under me. And I just think it looks kind of cute right up here, kind of. Um, nestled in those fern leaves. My girlfriend always has the prettiest planters on her porch in the summer with the, the Boston ferns. And I didn't mean to use Old Olive. I want to use basic black on that. I think we're done with the Old Olive now. But our front porch gets so much sun. We face west, and I have to be so careful what I plant out there because it, I mean, no matter how much you water, if you're, you've got Kansas City August sunshine all day long for six hours. So geraniums do good, petunias do good. But Boston ferns, they wouldn't do good. It would be too much sun for them. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm going to set that aside and we can put our, I don't know if you guys can see the, just the little sparkle that Wink of Stella gives. And I am going to put that on with a couple of glue dots. Just, I think two would be fine. Today I went and had the oil change in my car and I like to go to the dealer. My husband doesn't like me to do that because it's more expensive. <laughs> but our dealer has such a nice lounge and I had lunch there. They give you complimentary food and drinks so they made me a panini. And um, I am so full from that. But it took forever to get my oil change. Mondays must be a busy day. Okay, now I'm ready to adhere this. Oh, and they have free Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's just really nice. It's a place to get away and... Um, you know, you're actually accomplishing something, but you're actually relaxing. But actually, I was stamping while I was there. I had some invitations I wanted to get out. So I, I was stamping. Okay, now the last thing is to add some little um, sequins. And these are the metallic sequins. And I use the mini glue dots for that. So kind of what I do is I pick one up with my paper piercer and then I kind of find one that I want, like there's a silver one that would be good. And then I just kind of use that, it's kind of like a magnet to pick one up. And these metallic ones have gold and silver and white and clear and um, black which some of the black ones kind of appear coppery I'm gonna put one more try and find a silver one even a clear one would be cute they're star shapes clear one would be um, Kind of tie in that um, wink of Stella. I have yet to find a gold one. What does my husband say? It's always the last one. <laughs> oh, here's one. Let's see. There we go. And I'll just stick that one maybe right here. 
I love this card. This card would be so cute. Um, well, it's a birthday card, and I think it would work for um, a masculine card, for a masculine birthday. But it would be also be a really lovely... Um, sympathy card or um, just a how are you card thinking of you card I mean you could use you could um, do so many different things for it now let me get my messy paper out of the way so you can really see it well there we go so thank you all for joining me for this card and um, for more ideas and inspiration for paper crafting um, do check out my blog theplaidpoodle.com and, and um, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss an episode. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.